Hello friends, welcome to week 10's Q&A's, joined by my lovely wife Lucy. Hi guys. Lucy will continue asking me some of your questions from last week. So the next one is by the Pitolan Plumber, and he said, thoughts on casein powder? Oh, yes, uh, I remember that one. So, um, yeah, this is interesting. So my, I, my thoughts on casein powder are generally negative. So it's a, it's a nay for me, <laughs> and it's a nay on uh, any kind of protein powder for me, to be honest with you. But I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, if you're thinking about casein as opposed to whey, the main things that you look at uh, different are uh, digestion time, which I think is a good thing, that casein is digested more slowly, maybe a good thing, depending on how you're using it, right? Because we know for overall health, as well as for effectiveness, as well as for insulin resistance and all these kind of things, you want certain periods of the day to not be metabolizing food. So if you're using casein powder in a sense that all day you're digesting food, that's not really great either. At the same time, the speed at which whey protein digests is also not excellent. It's really harsh on the digestive process. Mm -hmm. So there are two extremes, right? So it could be good, could be bad, depending on how you use it. However, uh, the second thing that casein has different than whey, not many people talk about this, is casein has a lower content of leucine. Leucine is the amino acid that signals the most to mTOR from protein, to mTOR, the mechanistic target of rapamycin, to activate growth pa pa pathways in the body. So leucine, as well as isoleucine and valine, but mainly leucine. And this is why, but if you guys have been involved in the bodybuilding world for very long, you will have noticed that um, bodybuilders used to recommend, I remember in my like in the early 2000s, they used to recommend, I don't know if they still do this, to take high dose leucine amino acids. So people used to take amino acid, uh, bra bra uh, amino acid supplements and they used to have, some of them used to come in equal amounts of uh, leucine, isoleucine and valine. But people used to try to find the ones that have higher uh, levels of leucine as compared to the other amino mm -hmm. acids because they noticed that they would grow better from it. And indeed, the scientific research shows this is true. So um, leucine is something that longevity researchers try to stay away from. That's one of the things they're most concerned about in meat. So whey protein may signal to your body more to grow than casein. Casein, on the other hand, has higher levels of methionine. Methionine is, is an amino acid that your body uses to, uh, to produce, de novo produce um, uh, choline, which is very helpful for the liver. So, and it's in, found in meat at high, at high, in high amounts. But also, if you are a person that uh, has difficulty with methylation, particularly you may have polymorphisms at the gene called MTHFR, you may have difficulty if you keep supplementing with higher levels of methionine because your body has to, uh, that, the methionine eventually turns into homocysteine and your body has to recycle that back into methionine using methyl donors. And if your body has a, in, uh, a poor function of the MTHFR enzyme, having higher levels of methionine will increase your requirement for methyl donors and impede your body's uh, processes as well. And, ha and ha having higher levels of homocysteine, which is that byproduct that doesn't get recycled as well from methionine, has been correlated to bad cardiovascular health. So there's some complicated, complicating factors here. So there's no cookie cutter recommendation I can make for people. It depends how you use casein. It depends on your genetics. It depends on your, the rest of your diet. But in general, I don't, I don't think that protein powders are, uh, to be honest, I think that they're sort of a hoax uh, that's been promulgated by the uh, supplement industry um, because the supplement industry, you know, it's a, it's a very commercial industry and it relies on people's limited understanding of nutrition and their, and their health. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, I, I have never seen, in my own life I use protein powder so much throughout my life when I was weightlifting and I, I, was, I started weightlifting seriously when I was 15 or 16 years old. I went through periods where I didn't weightlift and you know, I became obese, I became skinny, I became all kinds of things and my, my body fluctuated a lot. But overall, I used a lot of protein powders in my life. And I have to tell you something, I never saw a benefit from my strength or even muscle mass, which I wasn't that concerned about, but, from, but either of them from using protein powders as compared to periods where I weight lifted and ate real protein sources. I never saw any benefit. And it's so much money being spent on that. In fact, to tell you, the op it's quite the opposite. I always grew better and was stronger when I ate um, meats or eggs, and in particular when I ate red meats. Um, now red meat, red meat may have other, I mean obviously they have other nutritional factors there, but the point is there was nothing about protein powders that added much value. When I was younger I thought, oh, 
like when I was 16 or 17 years old, I thought, oh, excellent. What I do is I use the whey protein at these times, then I use the casein before bed, and then my body is never starving for amino acids, so it never has to break down any protein. So mm -hmm. therefore, I'm gonna keep getting stronger and stronger. But it doesn't really seem to work like that. You do that, you get insulin resistant. And, and, and if you rely on these protein powders, you just don't grow or get as strong as if you eat real meats. And I'll tell you guys something, when I moved to Los Angeles and I started to know real uh, well-known weightlifters and competitive people, I noticed that these guys don't use protein powders much. They don't, they eat meat, you know, some of them eat like five pounds of beef a day. They really eat a lot of meat and they don't use protein powder. They sell it in their stores mm -hmm. and, they, and they're sponsored by the companies, but they don't use it. Do you think it's economical reasons? To save money that they're not eating it? No, the opposite, that people are using protein powder to because they can afford to buy and eat so much meat because meat is much more expensive than no protein the protein powder. powder is very expensive i don't know if on average if mm -hmm. you're eating like i've never actually done the calculations to think like how much protein you're getting from meat and how much that costs but i really think that protein powder may be more expensive overall really? i'm not sure but it's it's quite expensive uh it's definitely more expensive than eggs i'm mm -hmm. sure but i'm not sure about meat but no, the reason is because they think that the whey protein powder, in particular, you know, casein and whey are both found in cheese, your favorite uh, nutritional <laughs> item. But the whey protein powder is very quickly digested. So there, there's a propaganda in the supplement industry that after your workout, you need to digest protein very fast because right. otherwise your body will start burning muscle to get the protein out, which is not really true. In fact, your body right after your workout has a strong growth uh, mTOR and IGF-1 pulse. It's not going to be thinking that I need to catabolize and do uh, what's called autophagy, which is breaking down protein to uh, get energy or something else. Uh, you know, more, moreover, your body has uh, what really what you need after your workout is actually just uh, you need uh, gl uh, glucose. You need energy. Uh, maybe what you're doing if you take your, pro your whey protein right after your workout is you're turning it through gluconeogenesis into glucose. Mm -hmm. But your body has complex metabolic pathways. It's not uh, going to like, oh, I'm starving, I need a whey protein shake. It's quite, off. I mean, I've tried it myself. I've taken the whey protein shake after the workout or not done it, and there hasn't been much of a difference. I do notice if I don't eat it, or not now, but when I used to work out, if you don't eat right after the workout, what you'll notice is that you may lose more body fat overall. But what is best to do after the workout or before the workout is to eat real meals, not to take mm -hmm. this uh, whey protein. It doesn't do much. You may think, oh, taking the whey protein shake will signal to your body through the leucine to get the IGF-1 and to uh, get the mTOR going and all that, but that will happen through the meat that you eat before the workout as well as the meat that you eat after the workout. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I really think that this is sort of a scam. I really think that protein shakes are only useful for people that have truly nutri nutrient-deficient diets, okay. and in that case, they are not on their optimal path to strength or muscle growth in the mm -hmm. first place. So I, if I was you, I would eat real, real foods. In general, as human beings, we, as, as people interested in nutrition, we haven't been very successful at isolating foods, uh, uh, isolating uh, molecules out of foods and, and using them in their isolated form to great effect in terms of health. Always the foods seem to be, whole foods are better than these isolated mm -hmm. forms. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your question. We'll see you next week. Thank you.